Imagine a group of people lived on the land. They grew food and raised animals, and their children could go to school. However, due to a mismatch between land use and its sustainable potential, the land started to degrade. Their farm could no longer grow food as it did before. Everyone became hungry and poor, and eventually they had to move to other lands or to cities. The same story can be heard around the world. Some 25% of the world's land is degraded. It is impacting the well-being of 3.2 billion people globally. That is two out of every five people. Land restoration is one of the three key strategies that can help solve the problem and improve life on land. It can also have significant co-benefits for all the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. For example, it can increase water infiltration into the soil, which can then increase land productivity and create more income and food. This can reduce poverty, hunger, and improve health and opportunities for education. More and better quality of water can also be accessed. With all these, people who are forced to migrate may be able to come back to the productive land. The extent of restoration co-benefits and the potential risks and trade-offs vary widely among the SDGs and their respective targets. The co-benefits of the process of restoration and restored lands are also different for each SDG. To maximize opportunities across multiple SDGs, the International Resource Panel proposes four strategies. First, complete holistic and systematic analyses to identify potential synergies and trade-offs. Second, apply a landscape approach to planning and implementation. Third, develop targeted solutions adapted to different parts of the landscape and taking into account unique social, environmental, and economic contexts. And fourth, invest in areas where persistence is likely. When it comes to land restoration investments, we are so used to the conventional approach where we often address different objectives, such as agricultural production and biodiversity conservation, independently. Instead, we need an integrated landscape approach. It considers variable land potential and is designed by and responsive to all the stakeholders involved. And to maximize total return, we should target research and investments to those parts of the landscape that are most likely to respond and where recovery is likely to persist. In this way, we can ensure that we identify and realize the multiple potential benefits a land restoration project can bring about for the Sustainable Development Goals. Learn more about land restoration through the IRP's publication, Land Restoration for Achieving the Sustainable Development Goals at www.resourcepanel.org reports.